Welcome to Spiritual Basics Podcast with April and Jen, a bi-monthly podcast designed to teach the searchers, seekers, and spiritually curious the basics of metaphysics and new thought. They are all about the basics, but they are not basic bitches. Now, here are your hosts, April Dali and Jen Merkel. Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Spiritual Basics Podcast with April and Jen. My name is Jen Merkel. I am a transformational life coach and certified hypnosis practitioner. You can learn more about me and sign up for my wellness newsletter at jenmerkelhypnosis.com. I'm April Darley. I'm an emotional strength and confidence coach, and you can find out all about what I do and sign up for some goodies at aprildarley.com. Goodies. Goodies. I love your goodies, girl. Goodies. That sounds super sexy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> all my goodies bring all the people to the yard. Yes. King of goodies, what you got going on right now? So, Jen, you were not raised in the South, right? Correct no, me. No, but I wrong. always feel like I was Southern at heart ever since yeah. I saw uh, Gone with the Wind for the first time, you know? <laughs> That's right. Well, speaking of heart. never going hungry again, I made us classic Southern dish yesterday and oh. it's tea cakes tea so, cakes tea cakes so despite the name it is not actually a cake now it's, wait a minute you made something that's called tea cakes but it's not a cake but you're like not a the cake, cake I know, connoisseur you're like right? the cake fan right but if they're been, not cakes what are they so it is a cookie that has a denser almost cake-like texture so it's a little bit of a cookie cake hybrid but it's old Southern recipe. My grandma made them, loved them when I was a kid. And my grandma's recipe was pretty much impossible for me to try to duplicate because nothing's measured. It was in this random weird way. So I found a a recipe on Pinterest and made it. And it's pretty close to my grandma's tea cakes. Oh, when? That's awesome. Yeah, it is amazing. So tomorrow is my birthday. Yes. And happy birthday to you. Thank you. So instead of a cake cake this year, I made myself grandma's tea cakes. Oh, okay. So that's a little ingenuity going on there. It is. Little nostalgia, a little comfort food for this birthday pandemic time we got going on. Cool. Yeah. And how about you? What are you up to? Well, have you noticed what I'm wearing today? T-shirt connoisseur that you did. I did. (laughs) So I've got a witch t-shirt on and you've got a corgi. Yeah. Pembroke Welsh corgi t-shirt on. So it is so hard. So people that may have seen pictures of my corgi, I do post them every once in a while or put it up on my website. She is what's called a black headed tri. So that means she's mostly black, but you know, the, the typical corgi is usually what they call red looks mm-hmm. kind of like a tan color, right. In mm-hmm. various, you know, darkness, like in various shades, but that's ca- actually called a red. And yet's what you see. Like if you do Instagram, you right. know, stories, the little stickers, they're all the red. You almost never see a black headed try, mm-hmm. but, um, I found this t-shirt. It's a black headed try. I was so happy. I'm like, Oh my gosh. So I had to have it, <laughs> nice. you know? So it's interesting. Actually, I had a, uh, I had a conversation today at the dog park with someone who was asking about her because a lot of people, they think that they're not corgis Mm -hmm. because they're not colored properly, but actually the AKC standard, there's three different colors. So one is like that standard redhead, or Mm -hmm. I should say, sorry, the standard red, which you see everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then there's one called a redheaded tri, which is mostly red, has a little bit of black. And then there's the black headed tri, which is like karma. She's mostly black with a little bit of white and a little bit of red. Now, how you can tell the difference is the tips of their ears. So when they're born, Mm -hmm. if the tips of their ears are red, they're going to be a red headed tri. And if the tips there is are black, they're going to be a black headed tri. And I never knew that until I was, you know, going through the process of adopting her. Yeah. So there's a little corgi trivia for you. Yeah. And speaking of animals, we're talking about animals today and I'm super stoked about it. Oh, it's going to be an amazing show. Yes. Yeah. Mary Helen Schmidt uh, from It's My Nature. I actually met her at the North Tarrant Holistic Fair in Mm -hmm. April and we were chatting and I'm like, oh my gosh, you have to come on the show because Mm -hmm. animal communication is such a hot topic, especially if you have animals, Right. you know, you want to communicate with them. You want to learn more about them, but she has some amazing insight for us. So this should be a really, really good episode. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Because who doesn't want their animals to talk to them? I mean, I know you do some animal communication and I've reached out to you and said, what's going on with my dogs, you know, <laughs> time yeah, or but, two. and actually I even mentioned that to Mary Helen, when we, when we first met, I was like, you know, I do it, but I don't do it professionally. I do a lot of things yeah. professionally, but that's something that I do more like on an amateur level. And I used it a lot when I was doing my work at the horse rescue. Mm -hmm. um, but I even used it on my own pets in the past, or sometimes when I do animal Reiki, I'll mm -hmm. do it, but it's not my strongest. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, it's, it's really good because I know she's been doing it for a long time and she's right. a lot of insight for us. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear what she has to say. Yeah, for sure. So thanks for joining us, Mary Helen Schmidt. We are so happy to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, Mary Helen, we're just going to jump right in because we're both so excited to speak with yes, you today. So and excited. what we're dying to know is like, when and how did you first learn about this gift of animal communication that you had? I wasn't like this as a child. I didn't hear animals like a lot of people that are animal communicators do. Um, it wasn't till I, I worked for about 12 years in animal health, like at veterinary clinics. And I always knew, especially answering phone calls from people, like saying my cat's peeing outside of the litter box. And, you know, of course we tell them, come in, we'll check them out. Mm -hmm. And then it would be all fine, nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, hmm, there's more going on to that than meets the eye. And it just made me think more and more. Mm -hmm. And then I saw at some point um, uh, something on TV about animal communication. And I was like, I want to do that. I think I can do that. Again, it was just something else animal related. Right? Something the universe sent yeah, you, a little, right. little thing right there in the back yes. of your head saying, hey, and, learn and oddly this. enough, I had bought a book years before that, actually, mm -hmm. on animal communication, but I couldn't do any of the examples. Okay. It didn't work for me seven years before that. Mm -hmm. So I was still very cautious about it. And I went and bought another book. Mm -hmm. And in that book, I was like, now this makes sense to me. Why? I don't know, but it clicked. Mm -hmm. And then I even contact a psychic medium that was a friend and said, you know, I'm, I'm quitting the animal hospital. I'm, I just, you know, it's just too much. People don't get it. And, um, and I said, you know, what do you see? And she's like, well, either you doing hospice or animal communication. And I'm like, well, that's just right. Because I just want <laughs> another book on it. And I think that's it. And she suggested a place to take classes. And I began taking classes. Well, I like the confidence that you had. You're like, I'm just going to do that. And <laughs> so you did, right? <laughs> I did. You know, nowadays it's really different because a lot of, I think everything's opened up so much. People sure. are so much more aware of their gifts and, yeah. and the things that are opening up for people in the world and the energy of the world is so different. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's good. So I just, I just stuck with it and kept classes and I'd have gaps where I just kept practicing and of course, as you know, practice, mm -hmm. practice, practice. Yeah, That's for sure. Big part of it. Mm -hmm. So for me, it really opened me up to being aware that I have to pay attention to my body, mm -hmm. to my energy, to what where I'm at, mm -hmm. and then also then opening up your heart. And that's the biggest part of animal communication, which is opening up your heart. And there's so many of us that are afraid to. You know, it's all the same issues. It's lack of trust, mm -hmm. lack of worthiness, mm -hmm. lack of love. That's all what draws us to animals. Now, do you communicate just with pets or also animals in the wild? Just anything really. I mean, I'm drawn to animal companions because I've had many of them. There's many, many people uh, that are animal communicators and, and we all love animals, right? The, a lot of them say, I'm like, I'm just here for the animal. Well, no because they're connected to their human being. And that's why what I do is really focusing more on their relationships with what's going on in life, because they're dealing with the same things. They're, mm -hmm. they're in that together. I had one of the most amazing conversations. I can't remember it now. It was years ago, but it was like, I was blown away. It was with a tarantula. Oh. It, was a, it was somebody's companion animal. Mm -hmm. But I was like, whoa, I didn't, I had never <laughs> spoken to a tarantula before. Right. So it was amazing. I mean, rats are totally amazing to connect with. I love bugs. 
I love all that stuff. I love snakes. <laughs> I love all that stuff. That's something so. you don't hear too often. The yeah, bugs. I know. I know. <laughs> so hey, that's what maybe that's why I'm here. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I do have some personal experience where um <laughs> Like bees, for some reason, love me. They love to set like killer bees. I, I was in Arizona for several years <clears> and three houses that I own, we had killer bees four times. And uh, yeah, so when I see bees, I just tell them, you know, I, I can, I respect <laughs> you for what you are, but please leave me alone. And they well, usually do, but I still get freaked out about it. No, yeah. it's okay because they're obviously it's dangerous. I mean, mm-hmm. when you have African mice bees, they are very dangerous. But or even just say, regular bees, but yes. yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's a matter of sometimes you can ask. I mean, you can ask. It doesn't mean they'll cooperate. Right. They have their own agenda. Yes. They have their own ideas. I mean, that's one of the things in communication as part of your training is, you know, it's you need to connect with beings that you don't care for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's me and snakes. Hard oh, pass. Not a, not a fan. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. And for me, I'm, you know, if I were to choose in the whole scheme yep. of things, what I'm not very fond of is fire ants. And so oh, for me to yeah. say, yeah. I'm really not happy with you here. Could you please move? I've got acres out here. Yeah. Please don't get in my flower pots where I'm digging. Mm-hmm. And sometimes things will ease up, mm-hmm. but they will usually move aside mm-hmm. sometimes, mm-hmm. but then sometimes I get the feeling of like, no, this is a really good spot. And we want <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, you know, there are consequences, yeah. right? Because here's the thing. It always connects to everything else that we as human beings and animals do. And mm-hmm. we have to have boundaries. Mm-hmm. The boundaries are so important. That's yeah. Important. And you can set boundaries and still have love and respect for any Absolutely. being, sure. whether Absolutely. it's living, non-living, do you make contact with both living animals and those who have passed over to the other side? Yes. For me, they almost feel the same. Oh, well, actually that kind of makes sense. I could see that. I mean, they feel just as vibrant. They feel just as loving. They feel just as, as they were in life. Um, many times there's a component that's a little, you know, different. It's going to be a little more, maybe have a little more spiritual, but there's also the idea that they do give me usually information to say, just as if somebody was a medium that was talking to a passed over loved one. I was telling this lady the other day about like, you've got something new. You've either put up a wall or you've erected something in the home at the outside in the yard. She was like, Oh, we're fixing the routine <laughs> wall. You know? So I'm like, well, they know that yeah. they're aware because they're around. Mm-hmm. So, and, and it is sometimes a challenge because with animals that are, let's say missing mm-hmm. and, and that you don't know if they're alive or not, that is quite challenging. Some people are really good at that. Yes, they are. No, they're not. There's animals that feel like they've crossed over because their energy is so high. Mm-hmm. It's so fr- either frenetic sure. or it's, I'm free. Woohoo, this is mm-hmm. fun. <laughs> I think they're in spirit mm-hmm. and they're not. They're just on the loose having a good old time. <laughs> yeah. I almost wonder if some people have like an idea or like a preconceived notion that if their animal has crossed over that you wouldn't find them or be able to contact them. But obviously that's not the case. So that's really, really interesting. Now, when you do your readings and when you communicate with animals, are there any tools that you use like crystals or anything like that, or just your intuition? I just, that's what I do when I start a session normally is um, it is about getting, and that's, you know, something to be very peaceful, to get quiet. It's really like putting the car in neutral. That's where I have to be. So for me, it's more like, bring it on back. We're going to go in neutral. And then everything else has to come away from that. Like I am like in the middle, like if this is a human being and this is their animal and I'm in the middle and I do my best to create the flow and the conversation to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing that I do for me to connect um, just developed over time when I first began, I wrote out everything. I wrote out the conversations. Okay. Because writing, it was way easier, you know, automatic writing. It was a little bit like that. It was way easier for me to write out the conversation and I could be quiet. I could be very still. I would be very self-contained. And mm-hmm. then I could say like, well, Fluffy, what do you think about that? And then you sit 
get quiet Mm -hmm. and open up and let whatever come in. So that was the root of what I do now, which is just a very simplified version. So yeah, but I, that's kind of my tool, if you want to call it, but some people use a candle lit candle or crystals or something and, and just doing some grounding ahead of time is always important. And how did you get started doing this professionally and how long have you been a professional uh, pet communicator? Well, I began classes for, you know, a long time ago, I would say I've been doing it more for doing it for people and for going to little events along the way for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. I really intended to do it as a business. I I wasn't really anything like what's going on now. Mm -hmm. You can get your certificate over the weekend and you can, right. Whatever. And all the coaching and all that. It wasn't like that then. And what are the most common questions or problems that you solve for people? What are some of the most common things that people ask you to, for help with? There are a lot of different things and it also goes in cycles. So I don't know if you find that yourself. I would, I bet you do. So absolutely. Yeah. So some, sometimes there's a section of calls about the dogs are fighting. Now that's one that I get a lot, like in a big block of calls, you know, like all of a sudden, and it's the energy, you know, too, which we forget that we as we're like this lovely fluid container that goes and comes and feels with the planets and with the earth and the energy. So the animals do that too. And they are responding in our energy fields. Sometimes it's about people having too many animals and them not getting along. So it's not just fighting, but it's because they've they've overloaded. Everybody's on overload to not enough personal space. We could say it like that. Used to be, it was more like cats missing the litter box. I haven't had that, but you know, it's kind of like you ask the universe to bring you the people that need it, whatever they need. Mm-hmm. So lately it's been more grief related with their animals crossing over or, or passing away from a, an illness or disease. And, and we, because we're humans, love to carry so much baggage Mm -hmm. that we just hang everything on that. And I have to help extricate them from that because with the help of their animal, they can understand that it really isn't about any of that. Right. It's about their journey. They feel complete. They might feel this, but the person is like, I feel so guilty. And it's like, well, you're going to have to hang that up. Your animal doesn't isn't saying you did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Many times it's like that. What are the most common things that animals tell you? It's always different. And it, for me, because I connect with people and their animals, it's something usually about clearing things up because we as humans think one thing and we want to say, oh, it's because of this, because we've got it all figured out. We think, you know, we're human. We just, we're so smart. (laughs) And, um, a lot of times they already know, they already know what the issue is. Once in a blue moon, they'll already tell me, like somebody will say, I never even had to ask the question because you just ask them. And they're like, she thinks that there's a problem with this and it's not me. And then I'll know, like, for example, one lady years ago said she had two dogs, Shih Tzu's, um, and she had a pool table and one of them was peeing on the pool table. One of the dogs was older. One of them was a puppy younger. And she was, I know it can't be the older one because he's housebroken and he would never do that. <laughs> so, and you know, when somebody says they <laughs> never, right. never goes a long way. Right. Yes. So I felt, and I didn't go there. I just felt into it. And as soon as I felt the older dog, it was an interesting feeling um, as far as it being a little bit resentful. But I felt him saying more about the idea that it felt very separated. He felt distanced in some way. I said, well, what's happening that you feel this way? And it was more of the feeling of I'm left out. I'm Mm -hmm. left out. And I'm like, well, did you do things? Yes. I used to do all this stuff. I used to do all this exciting things with them. And now I don't. And, um, And he showed me. I said, well, what did you do? And I saw him. I didn't see what he did. But I saw him wearing a bandana with flames on it, which was very exciting. Mm -hmm. And I said, and so you don't do that? And it was just like, no, like it was such a disappointment. So when I told her that, she said, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that. And I'm like, what? She goes, well, 
and we always took him riding motorcycles. Aww. He always rode on the motorcycle <laughs> in the front and he had his own get up and gear and mm-hmm. everything. And they were leaving him at home and taking Aww, him. Poor off. baby. Aww. I know. Aww. And the thing is, I understand in a human perspective, you think, oh, he's, he's having difficulty. Or if you went mm-hmm. somewhere, let's say that there was high altitude or something that could affect his health. But in some ways, we have to understand that that's the most important thing to them. Mm-hmm. You know, if we can mm-hmm. possibly get away with doing a little bit of it and giving them that little bit of joy, that little bit of excitement, just as we love that excitement and the way we did it together, that was so important to him. Mm-hmm. So what I just asked her to do is just take a few short rides with him, mm-hmm. you know, not work, not going down the highway and, you know, whatever right. they were doing, but giving him that same feel. Mm-hmm. And, and she was like, oh, I will, you know, I can do that. But it was, it was him peeing on the pool table leg because he was saying, oh. what am I, chopped liver? You know, right. <laughs> like, yeah. why are you doing that? Mm. Her story is actually a really great lead into my next question was how do the animals communicate with you? Is it by pictures? Do you hear their voices? How is it? All those things. Mm -hmm. So they send in that bubble of telepathy. Again, it can be pictures, sounds, tastes, um, any of the clairs that you guys teach, um, hearing, feeling, knowing all of those things. I put it in the context of language because that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the time it's through feeling for me. Okay. And I would say that for many, many people, because many people want to be able to do that or know to connect with their animal. It's really about being connected with your body. And most of them are empaths. Mm-hmm. And so if you're, I mean, you can be psychic and you can be these other things as well, but when you have that place of connection, being open to others, feelings and um, issues going on around them, that opens the door. So you already have that within you to do. It's about quieting yourself, being calm, and then just getting in that space to receive. Do you have to be present with them? Do you do it uh, online? Do you do it by phone? How do you connect? Like, as far as the client is concerned, how do you connect with the client? I do it over the phone. Okay. I don't even use photos a lot of the time, but I do know what that horse looks like because she sent me a photo and everyone's different. Some people look at their eyes. They say, Oh, I can, I know what's going on through the eyes. That's the eyes. You know, you see the soul through the eyes. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. I don't want to read from a photo either because the photo can be very misleading. I want to feel the energy. I want to feel who they are. And sometimes at the end, I was like, would you send me a photo now? Because I feel like I know them, but I don't have to see them because the other piece of that is that as a vet tech, I can see a lot of things that I go, oh, something's wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That animal has that coat looks like this and mm-hmm. it doesn't look good. And I, you know, I don't want to go there because that may not be what they're wanting me to do. Yeah. They're not, they're not seeking you for practical knowledge. They're seeking you to, yeah. you know, help them with a problem by communicating with their animals. So that's yeah. beautiful. Sometimes they want to know about their illness. Sometimes I can get things and other times the animals don't want that to go that direction. You know, I had a a lady years ago and she had cancer and her dog had developed cancer. Now she was doing better. She was doing fine. Um, And she was just heartbroken that her dog was having cancer. And she wanted me to ask if he, you know, like she was like, I don't want him to take that on for me. Cause we, they do, I mean, mm-hmm. they're in that shared, beautiful space with us and with our energy. So they're helping, they can do it for a lot of different reasons. Right. This dog was like, you are not going to talk me out of it. Oh. Hmm. So this is what I do. This is what I came for. Well, who am I to argue with that? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, he wanted her to understand how important her self-care was those appointments, all those appointments that she made sure to take him to. She might not have been doing all of her own. And he, this was his way to get through to her that her self-care was as important to him as his self-care was. Do animals ever tell you or talk to you about reincarnation, especially as a different animal species? And the reason I ask is one of my dogs, I took her to an animal communicator and this communicator told me that she said, I don't like it when I come back as an ant with as a dog because a dog's life is very hard. So, and she said that she would like to come back next as a bird. 
she would like to be a bird when she comes back next. So has that ever happened in your experience? Yes, yes okay. absolutely. There's lots of ways that goes. Actually, when you were telling that story, I got full body chills. <laughs> so I would say there's definitely truth in that mm-hmm. um, without knowing your animal and knowing the situation. Mm-hmm. Animals come in for a lot of different things. And just like we do, the soul, most of the time, you know, they've chosen, they want to try this. I want to come back. I want to do this, whatever. And sometimes maybe that part of them as we in our consciousness or or just our regular conscious state think, why would I come back as something that's going to be abused? Right. But our soul knows some of those lessons have to be done in some form or fashion, possibly. So, um, reincarnation as far as that goes yes i've had animals show me yes they came back it doesn't come up i don't resort to that you know some people mm-hmm. just really always say oh they came back as this and no 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 that was mm-hmm. my dog you know i let them make sure i get it mm-hmm. because sometimes it's not relevant mm-hmm. you know some people we get hung up on that right mm-hmm. because you know as well as i do if you cloned your dog it's not going to be the same exact dog right because it, it has a different soul it has a different soul, different soul exactly. Different spirit. Mm-hmm. exactly. So people think, well, they're going to come back and they're exactly the same. Well, you're going to be really disappointed because sometimes it doesn't work that way. Now there can be those perfect step ins where they just, everything goes back and they know, mm-hmm. and that's where, you know, you just know, mm-hmm. they know where the water, they know where the food is. They know where everything is They make themselves at home because they've been there before. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely good. There are animals that do like to come in as other want to try other species. I've had mm-hmm. a horse. I know that horse was human before. Mm-hmm. I know it was because he was way too smart and he knew so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I also had a dog, a lady called me. This one's quite difficult, but it was a dog that was going to be euthanized the next day. And it was because it had bitten so many people and she w- loved the dog, loved the breed, It was a species specific breed Mm -hmm. that she took care of and helped. So she understood the breed very, very well and what they needed. And so she said, it breaks my heart, but you know, right now it's, it's done. He's bitten. She was like the, I don't know, seventh home Mm -hmm. and every, he bit Mm -hmm. everyone, even though she loves a dog and she would work with them Mm -hmm. and he'd had all the help that she could offer through training and behavior and Mm -hmm. all that stuff. But she said, I don't want to do this without getting his perspective. Mm -hmm. And you know, what shocked me was that that dog said, I want out. This is not what I wanted. This is not what I signed up for. And then I knew he didn't. And I think he had been human at some, Mm -hmm. maybe. But the idea of coming in as a dog, like somebody's friendly companion, it wasn't what he thought. He didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And he made sure he let everybody know. He wanted, he was trying his best to get out. Mm. And so for her, it was a huge relief Mm -hmm. because she was like, I'm not doing the wrong thing. I said, no, you're actually doing exactly what he wishes. You know, some animals, they know, as you know, with people, our soul knows. So even having a a lady with like another horse lady and she adopted a horse from another woman who passed away and he loved that woman. He loved his prior owner. And of course, he never would have wanted to leave her. And so she had the horse and she's a wonderful horse person. She does everything for the horses. They get the best of care. And yet he wasn't at her place very long. He choked on whatever and he passed away. And I knew, and she, she's very intuitive too. Mm -hmm. And she, I was like, no, he had to be with her. Yeah. Leave. Mm -hmm. So again, that goes back to the soul's mission and the soul's Mm -hmm. wisdom And we have, and that's where it's very hard for us as human beings, because we put a lot of attachment on what, what we're doing for them or how we're caring for them or, Mm -hmm. or that we're not doing something right, or we didn't love them and you know, whatever, it really didn't have anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. It just had to do with them knowing what they came for and what they really, really loved and want to do. And do you feel that anyone can communicate with animals or is it a special gift that only some people can do? Oh, anybody can do it because I didn't know anything. I mean, I had the, I did love animals as a kid. I mean, everybody says I love animals, you know, but I did want to communicate with them as a child. I just didn't, I didn't know anything about it. So for me at this later stage in life to say, you know, 
I want to do this. And everybody, you know, the self-talk says, oh, you're too old to yeah. start. Well, you're going to be a year older and you hadn't started, you know, mm-hmm. so you might as well start. Mm-hmm. And so it is a, I, I learned it through just exercises, examples, practice, practice, practice. It's about what we want to open within ourselves because that's what the animals do. They bring out the best in us. And it means a lot of also work on yourself. And I know you guys know that too, because mm-hmm. what comes up will be your own stuff that you get to learn about, that you mm-hmm. get to release, that you get to transform. And that's what it is. It's transforming with the animals. So beautiful. Yeah, you I just put it. that so beautifully. I love she it. Did. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I have a kind of a two part question here and we'll be getting to the readings in just a minute, which April and I are super excited about. Yes. Um, but kind of along the same lines about communicating with your pet first part, can you give some tips maybe on how some of our listeners might be able to communicate or at least, you know, like minor communication, just starting out communicating with their pets. And then secondly, this kind of translates from, you know, my intuitive development students and, and they always have a hard time trusting their intuition. It's so common. And Mm -hmm. so how can someone know that they're actually communicating with their pet and not like making up stuff in their head? Basically to me, it is really important just with many things is to get quiet, to get calm and to be peaceful. Because we as humans love to fill our world with Facebook and TV. Yes, and especially news. nowadays, there's always oh something God. going on. Yeah, because lots of distractions. Nobody's doing out stuff, but it's distraction. And that all that. And I, I have a dear friend who just says, I couldn't do that because I have a monkey mind. Well, you know what? We all have a bit of that. And so we get to intentionally step into that peaceful space. It's all about intention. It's really intending that I'm going to um, get quiet and peaceful and breathe. Those are always good. Another thing is to to, um, put yourself in the place with your animal. And so if you're there, you know, if it's your animal, then you can either try to sync your breathing with their breathing. You know, that's one thing that's really lovely to feel. It's like making this flow, this circuit. That's another thing. It's a very good mental tool also to imagine the circuit. If you're more of that, if that energy helps you to visualize the circuit being open. So there's that. Um, The other thing is just to be hydrated is very important to be grounded. If you think about it, animals really know how to ground because they've got a lot of them have four legs. Some have more legs. Some have, you know, some don't have any legs, but they are in contact with mother earth. I really feel like to connect the fact that you're on the earth with them the same way, whether it's through the ocean, whether it's through the air, whatever, but that's earth element. That's the whole of the earth of mother earth. So that's another way to help get yourself out of your own space, Mm -hmm. out of your own mental space, bring it out around you. Also, Use your other senses, smell, like smell their fur without sniffing them, feel the smell, hear the jingle of something, what their tags, whatever, but you, you let those sounds come in, but not to attach the human perspective. We do as humans project a lot. So that's, what's difficult um, about it because we do think, well, that's just me thinking that for whatever reason, I'm have not always been the most confident person that I would admit to that right now, today. (laughs) Yet when I learned, I, in that moment, had to decide, well, this is it. Am I going to do it or not? This is the leap of faith. And you let faith lead your way. I had to go into it. And that was a very scary place for me. Yet when I received something, if you want to look at it logically, I knew that I didn't have that thought. I know I didn't say those words. I didn't have that accent. I didn't do that. And when you have, this is the catch that most people do is that they will go, oh, well, you know, that was just a coincidence or that just reminds me of Uncle Joe. Well, it might've been Uncle Joe popping (laughs) in. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And he's probably with the dog all the time. (laughs) Um, So so it's kind of very similar to that kind of thread where you have to let yourself get out of the way. It's almost as if to say, I'm here, but I'm, not Mary Helen in this space. I'm this animal in this space, or I'm allowing the flow of information in this space. And 
when I first began, I literally did my own little visualization of being in a dog bone. Like the person's in the one end of the dog bone, the dog's in the other end, let's say, and I'm in the middle because that was a container. You're creating a container. That's another thing. It has to feel safe. And most people don't feel safe. And the thing is, it's funny is they project a lot of that on the animals. True. And it's not really necessarily the truth of it. And so that safety factor is about us and our ego and trying to keep us safe and all those things. And so before you start, you can say, ego, you're going to take a trip to Bali or (laughs) Hawaii or whatever. And you're going to just step aside because I'm safe here. And doesn't that bring that down in your body? I mean, when you say that, that feeling. Mm -hmm. So if you get in that quiet space and you realize that you have the support of all your animals, animals on the planet animals and spirit, all of you have the support of all of them. Ooh, doesn't that feel better? (laughs) So much better. Lovely. Very well said. Thank you so much Mm -hmm. for all that info. So let's get to the readings. This is so exciting. So April, why don't you go first? Let's let's cross my fingers. (laughs) So, yeah. So I have two dogs, so I don't know if you just want to pick one or both. You start with whoever you'd like to start with. Oh, that's, that's like choosing between your children, right? No, but, it, I don't, <laughs> but I can do both. That's fine. Yeah, okay. um, so you need names. So her name yeah, names. is Bella. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's a female. Okay. What, she's what breed? Chihuahua mix. Okay. Uh, she's color? a rescue. Uh, she is brown body, black face and tail tip. Okay. Um, and how old is she? Between 12 and 13. She'll be 13 at some point this year. Okay. So the first thing I understood were is say, like to say, she's funny. So <laughs> she's to funny. say, you know, to let go of the rescue word, because she's like, it's okay. Just give me a sec because there's so much here. <laughs> she's very chatty. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> she's very chatty. So I want to ask her in this space, in this connection that I have with you, um, what would she like me to convey to you about all of that? Oh, I do want to ask you, I didn't ask you. Mm-hmm. And I, sometimes they give it to me, but I want to ask you, how long have you had her? I've had her for 10 years. Okay. Okay. (laughs) That's like, she's like, this is a long time. We've been together a long time. There's nothing about rescue here. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? She's Mm -hmm. saying that it wouldn't have mattered to me if you had bought her as a puppy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter Mm -hmm. to me. And it doesn't matter to her because this is where she's at. This is home. This is love. This is, Mm -hmm. you know, all of it. Um, And so when I feel into that, um, gosh, she's precious. She is. I think so. It makes me just want to cry. Proud mom. Right. <laughs> because she, to me is a, I mean, I feel like I'm ready to cry right now. So mm-hmm. to me, the tears and I, I know, ch- I mean, I love chihuahuas, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. they do tear up, but I do feel like she expresses things for you with your work and with what you do and you do things. She shows me. So this is how it works for me. It's about relationships. Mm-hmm. So for me, and many people do it differently, but for me, it's their animal and how they love their person and what they, they know in their world. Mm-hmm. And she shows me that some things can be really heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. You really have a tender heart is what she mm-hmm. shows me. And that those things, whether you know it, or well, you know it, but you can't always deal with it. I mean, as a human being, we go, I can't, I can't cry over that right now. Or I can't, you know, get into that because that drags me into something else, but she helps you with that. She helps you process those things. Um, it's funny because I don't know how much she weighs, but she feels dainty in her. She says she's dainty. She, <laughs> she may be like a little to think chubby. So. more than she used to be, maybe. Okay. Yes. Well, right. She may be a little chubby because it's funny. Sometimes they show yeah. me the opposite, maybe, right. but, but rounded and whatever mm-hmm. and not getting around. But she just shows me very daintiness about her. Mm-hmm. And yes, I would agree that as as I see her is the young, her, the right, the lively part of her. And so to me, it was very important. I feel like at night, does she get up at night a lot? Only, only she's got some health uh, issues. So that's a recent development. So I feel like she's up at night a lot. Mm -hmm. And so that was the movement I was feeling with her right now. And, um, and she said, you're really being good about that. Um, She said, it's kind of impractical. That's her way of wording it. She's a very loving energy. There's animals, they love you and they don't get in your lap. They don't even want you to necessarily touch them and they can love you. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of, I do have a lot of people that go, well, the dog doesn't really get near me and won't sit in my lap. And I'm like, they don't want to sit in your lap, but they love you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> they just do it a different way. And we as humans expect it. It's like and the humans projecting their exactly. belief of love, love onto their animal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And we don't, and we don't know that that's not all animals express it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, let me ask, what's your other dog's name? Simba. And tell me what kind of dog? Chihuahua mix. Okay. And male or female? Male. How old? Between seven and eight. Okay. And neutered. I'm, I'm assuming yes. neutered, 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 but, yeah. Yeah. but it does change their perspective many times if they're unneutered, but I assume I don't, I shouldn't have assumed that. So, and uh, color. He is tan with white feet, white tail tip, okay. white stripe. He shows me he's very different. He, he has a really different look. He has a very different way of moving his body. He, oh, he does true. something funny with his body. I don't know what it is. But he does. He's almost showing yeah. me this shuffle or this thing that he does. That yes, so cute. exactly. He does it. a shuffle. It's, it's exactly cute. it. Yeah. It's so cute. Mm-hmm. And it so shuffle. he's very comical to me. He's way more. And of course we have an age differential, mm-hmm. but I, I think even as earlier when Bella was younger, um, she didn't, she wasn't the same. And, and that's not what she's, she was here for. Mm-hmm. She was about some other state of being for you in your life at the time, like around her seven year old Mm -hmm. stage, when she was that age, you were at a different stage in life. Mm -hmm. And so she did what she needed to do for that stage of life. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Simba, he's really more about like, what the heck did you just do? What is that? What, what, you know, it's, (laughs) it's fun. It's exciting. He does things Mm -hmm. to me comically. It just gives you joy. Mm-hmm. He just is all about joy and fun more, more so. Mm-hmm. And that's a perfect balance for the mm-hmm. two because he knows that you have concerns for her. Mm-hmm. He knows. So see, it's, this is what's so lovely is that we get everybody involved mm-hmm. and that they can, they know what each other's going through. They know what you're mm-hmm. going through. And so with him, he knows what you're going through, worrying about her. Mm-hmm. And so he wants to be a little bit of comic relief, if you will, or mm-hmm. just a matter of distraction or whether it's the, the joyful feeling, but there's a piece that comes in and this is how it does. It just settles in. And so there's the thing that I think I'm supposed to tell you is that you don't have to worry about any of that with her Mm -hmm. because everything is just stacked the way it's supposed to be. It's Mm -hmm. like these blocks of your life and blocks of their existence. It's a weird weird way to say it, but you see, Mm -hmm. when I felt these weird things coming up, I'm like, I have to tell you the way it's being shown to me. Mm -hmm. So it's like you, you're in a different place at mm-hmm. each segment here through with these dogs and they are supporting you in that. What I'm getting from him, he, you know, he shows me, he does, he watches her. He, he does. So her. he's like this dog that is never incarnated before. And he, it's like, he doesn't know how to dog. Yeah. So when I got him, he watched her to figure out how to be a dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's an amazing being. He's very, and again, that joyful energy, that's the one you're talking about that was wanted to be a bird maybe or something. I don't no, know. That, that was, that was Bella. Never. Yeah. See, that was I, Bella. Know. I didn't ask, yes. but I yes. was just like, but that young soul, I think that's part of that. Mm-hmm. There's a connection to that bird energy with him too. Okay. Because and, it's light. It's very yeah. fun. You know, birds are really good at being, yeah. you know, yeah. in the moment too. So yeah, there's a connection in there. Yeah. And I'm the typical owner. So they, they both have health issues. Like, is there anything they want to say? Okay. Let me ask that. Um, yeah. Sure. So um, with, I, with her, I felt things kind of being a little off, like sluggish and mm-hmm. without going into too, too much, but, and it may not come that way. Cause sometimes they don't want you to go there. Sure. Right. Yeah. So um, to me, I felt with her, her life um, issues have been progressive mm-hmm. but this has been coming mm-hmm. and that um it's okay to um acknowledge those stages like stage of this stage of that mm-hmm. like if it's heart then stage of the heart issue right. and going along and then we don't breathe as good and mm-hmm. we might have this and we might not whatever and we need to be kept cooler than normal mm-hmm. you know so we don't pant a lot whatever mm-hmm. but i'm just getting that fullness in her chest, that feeling of that and things just not moving the way they're supposed to in her body. Yeah. Um, and 
to me, she shows me that it's no different than a human being who came in to do a job and did their very best. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens, the body doesn't always can't go on. You know, I mean, the body can't stay forever. And so to me, she shows me that this is actually something she chose. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, as far as the heart or whatever, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. No, but, you are right. She has okay. congestive heart failure. So okay. you are spot on. So, with that. Okay. Yeah. Cause I felt this yeah. so much yeah. here, but she just says, well, when you give so much heart, you know, yeah, it's part of the picture, it's part of it. And that's the willing to me, that's the willing deal. You know, yeah. that's the, let's yeah. make a deal. That's yeah. what I'm willing to do for you. Yeah. That's what I'm willing to do for um, a human being that I love and cherish. Um, she's very like your little, you know, with you. She, I feel her yeah. very close to you. Yeah. And so, and I would say too, that there's something that I, I've used and, and I don't know if anybody else has ever used this, but my thing is with animals saying they've come into a person's life and the person says, well, I kept them or I didn't keep them or they, whatever. And, mm-hmm. you know, for whatever reason they come to us. Yeah. Sometimes we are just the cosmic taxi. Mm-hmm. We're just meant to get them where they go. I used to believe, you know, I had, mm-hmm. gosh, I had seven dogs, five to seven dogs all the time. And um, it was more like, when, but a cat showed me that in mm-hmm. my work was that I found this cat and I was really stressed because I loved the cat and I wanted to keep the cat, but I'm like, this isn't a good, it's not a match. It's not, it doesn't feel right. right. And I connected with the cat. And she's like, you know what? You're just the cosmic taxi. It's Okay. <laughs> You know, you're meant to get me where I'm supposed to go. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not meant to stay here. Well, Mm -hmm. whatever cosmic moment happened Mm -hmm. for you Mm -hmm. and her, that was supposed to be to stay. And so that was it. And that's where, you know, we, we know that, you know, that that was it. You know, Mm -hmm. you felt that was the right thing and all of Mm -hmm. it worked out. Oh, so what I'm getting is (laughs) the way her heart goes now in the present mm-hmm. it builds on the other side so her heart and her love for you builds on the other side so don't look at it like her heart's failing and all this go like oh my gosh you're building up you're it's like transitioning money, right right yeah it's like putting money in the savings you know it's like, <laughs> all right it's, it's gonna be there it's gonna be like worth a million dollars over there <laughs> yes so just remember that there's no loss I mean, that's the biggest thing. And I know you guys understand that, you know, that doing what you do, but yeah. it's when it's your animal, it doesn't matter. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Everything 100%. goes out the window, right? Yes. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. He's just got respiratory issues. So some weird respiratory thing that we can't figure out. Okay. Let me ask but, that. Has he been ever tested allergy wise? Specific. That's what I think it is. So allergy testing, no, but he's had like chest x so i know there's nothing wrong with his lungs and his heart Perfect. so that's where i am thinking it is allergies right, right. okay so i want to ask you this the feeling of it is more of something that you may use on your own body hmm. okay. something that could be sensitive and and you know it's always important to pay attention to when the the wheezing or the heart, the, I mean, mm-hmm. the breathing becomes more difficult. Pay attention if it's morning, evening, midday, okay. after being in the yard or being in the house. Okay. And then, and we change products that we use on our body, but sometimes there's uh, basic components of them and that mm-hmm. could get a trigger. I really okay. don't, I, that's what's coming to me okay. um, initially. So just look at that. I just, but it was something about the, in your proximity, and it feels like this has been like within the last couple of years that it's been more pronounced. So. Uh, it, it started last year. Yeah. So just oh, feel into that. Like I know okay. I got it to two years, but it may have started just before then, okay. but just look at your own, okay. whether it's hormone levels, whether it's okay. um, things, because these guys are so, I mean, mm-hmm. I can smell you from here. <laughs> it's <open laughs> I'm smelling. So it's very sensitive, whatever this is, but okay. he's, he's like almost a medical alert dog. Interesting. Okay. See, so he's just showing me there's different things about the body and it does smell different and it can be energy as well. It can be an energy of a person around you. It could be somebody hanging in your space as well, because I might smell it, but of course they might smell it too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See? Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you. And thank you to Bella and Silva. Thanks, guys. Awesome. So yeah. I have two dogs to ask you about as All well. Right. Okay. The first one is a dog that I no longer have. Okay. Um, about two and a half years ago, I left Arizona when I separated from my husband and we eventually became divorced, but he kept the dog. Okay. Um, mostly because I it was decided because I didn't really have the ability to keep him. I was moving to a third floor apartment. He was older and I feel horrible about abandoning him. He, I mean, I told him, you know, before I left, I communicated as best I could. Um, but I just, there's always that doubt, like, and I still feel badly and I'm still getting upset thinking about it because I miss him. He was the perfect dog. Okay. And then the other dog. Um, the other dog is a dog that I have now. So let me, can you want me to give you the stats on the first dog? <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to, that's a very interesting separate issue. We have. Okay. Dog. Okay. So, and I that's a heavy guys, issue. <laughs> I know. And I can feel that. And so what I was going to do was get your first, your second dog. Okay. We'll do and then connect some dots. Or you okay. Got well, she, the dog I have now, she has never met him. She will oh, be awesome. two in July. Um, okay. but her name is karma. She okay. is a Welsh Pembroke or Pembroke Welsh Corgi. She is mostly black, has some white on her and a little bit of brown. She's a black headed tri. Okay. And uh, did you need something else? I can't remember. Um, no, I think this, okay. and you, you got her. Did you get her as a puppy or no? I did. I got her as a puppy, but right. um, she was like 13 weeks old when I got her. She was oh, left over from the litter. That's really good. Okay. That's good. I like it when they stayed with Mama yeah, I was, that's one of the reasons why I got her okay. at that age rather than at eight weeks. Okay. Yeah. I like it. You, you're, you're just singing my song. It's great. <laughs> so, okay. So the first dog, I will ask his name. You said it's he Duke. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's the thing. This is an interesting thing with animal communication or the way I was taught. If I don't have permission from the person who has guardianship and care of the animal, then ethically, I don't communicate with that animal uh, okay. because you can overstep boundaries. And if something came up and you could stir up all kinds of problems. And sometimes by applying those things, you can make more of a mess and you also make more of a mess within yourself, but I'm going to leave a space there for Duke. Okay. So with connecting with karma, because most of the time animals, they have connections we don't understand or know or realize. And, and it's funny because, you, you know, if you work with people in spirit, in spirit, they kind of mm-hmm. can sure. network, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, animals can do that because they're telepathic. Right. They also are connecting in your energy field and the other person's energy field. And we can, they just know, you know how that is when you have somebody, I'll give you the example, and this probably touches on you. When you have a human being who is in such grief about a loved one and they hold that loved one so tightly that they, they aren't able to see beyond it. And so when we hold that space of that other animal or that human being that we love so much and we're grieving, it's right there. They know it. They feel it. They may even see it. And a lot of times they'll, you know, animals say, well, I still got my picture. She's got the pictures of me up there. You know, I got the photos, right? You have the photos. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. There you go. <laughs> and that's what they tell me. It's like, she's got the photos. So it's okay. So that's why I want you to understand that that, so I want to ask them and I want um, karma to jump in here too. She's a doll. I would say that. That's the way I think of it. She's a doll. I mean, she may be feisty and all the things that corgis are. Yeah, but, she's sassy. <laughs> but there is, but that's what you, to me, that's what you need. Yeah. That's, the, that's, that's the right dose of dog medicine. She shows me she's mm-hmm. dog medicine for you. Mm-hmm. It's like taking a pill. Somebody might take an ibuprofen and you just get a dose of Bella. I mean, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. Of karma. <laughs> karma yes. I'm sorry, in letter A. Sorry. We got the A's. Um, And so you get a dose of karma. And isn't that an interesting twist on the words? Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. Isn't that ironic? Funny. And it's, that's how they do it. And that's when I work and it doesn't always work like this, but because I think special, especially because I have two human beings that are so open and sensitive and all of that, it opens up all of that space 
because you get it. And then more comes in. It's a deeper and more, and they, and then they connect some dots. I love that when they connect the dots. So the karma and the idea that Duke is there with you all the time because you hold him here. So I can ask, I'm going to ask more of karma to ask about that, to ask about the Duke thing. And, you know, there's a part of her that, you know, like you said it, I didn't read it. You said he was perfect or he was just right or whatever. He was like what you always imagine is the perfect dog. Right. I get it. I felt it when you said, I I think everybody has that perfect dog at one point in their life. And he was the one. Yeah. And I get it. I mean, it's solid like that, you know, dependable, you knew what to expect. They knew what to do. They didn't mess Mm -hmm. up. They didn't, they did everything right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. So let me feel into all of that big picture. So with karma, allowing him, allowing Duke to continue to be Duke out there, over there with the X. It's okay. I mean, there's nothing in that that you can do anything about. Right. And and I know it's very hard because we worry and we love our animals. But to me, what I'm understanding and this, I'm looking through the view from karma as well as Duke, the idea that you had to do what you had to do. I think one of my main concerns is that I feel like I abandoned him and I don't want him to feel like I had any other option. Like I don't want, I almost picture like him (laughs) as a dog would do when I was leaving that house for the last time. Yeah. He laid on my bed and he just looked at me with those sad eyes and I knew, you know, it was goodbye. And I feel like I just have this feeling like he's still back in Arizona. And by the way, he's very well cared for with my ex. I'm not worried about that, but I almost feel like he is like, she left me and I don't know why. Okay. And that's sad to me. I know. And I can't go down that rabbit hole with you, but let me, let me give that just a second. Cause they're um, to me, karma, this is what I saw. She's a corgi. They're herding dogs. And they also like to do their thing, dig and things up and whatever. I mean, I'm not sure if that's what she does at all, but, but it's like, she feels like she's retrieving you or digging you up from that spot, from that place. Oh, she of, absolutely does. Yes. Yeah. Cause I feel like she's down, she's got, you're down in this hole and she's like pulling you up through the hole. Like, come on out of there. Come on out of there. Don't go into that dark space. Don't be in that dark space. So she's, she is wholeheartedly doing the best she can to help you with that situation. Um, there's other things, and I don't know all of what they are, but there's a lot of other things that are connected to this loss and the separation from Duke and, and, the, and the separation of relationships because maybe this is something you really thought would work and it really didn't, it was so disappointing. And so the idea that you have to know that Duke can hold that, he can hold that. And so when you doubt, you don't wanna doubt him. And you know that when we, it's like when we heal ourselves, when we send healing energy to other things, it heals the planet, it helps, it heals animals. You just have to hold the space. So you hold the space with him, not go down the rabbit hole of the grief and feeling he didn't blah, blah, blah. I guarantee you he knew. He knows all Yeah, this. I think he deep down, everything. I really do know that, but there's I always do. that doubt, right? You know, well, especially when it comes to such difficult situations, we tend to doubt ourselves. Well, sure. And, and because it's in your life, it's your, you're right there all of the disappointments in relationships, all the disappointments. in I thought this was going to be this and all of that, (laughs) all of that comes into it, but, and the animals are there present and willing to help with filtering, with shuffling, with balancing. They do all the things that they can to do their best to hold it together. And they already know. And for me, when I feel all of that, and I'm asking karma to lead this, Um, Because I can go there and I don't want to Um, because she shows me that, that there, to me, there's a resolution for Duke. There is resolution because he was aware of the goodbye. 
he knew you were going way yeah. before you, you knew you were actually, he knew you were going before you were, knew you were going because mm-hmm. he felt all of that. So the idea is that it wasn't, I mean, yes, it's always good to tell them and verbalize that. And I would say that, yes, they understand our language. Yes, they, and more so it's the lang- the language below the language, which is telepathy, which is the feelings, thoughts, and emotions that we have. When you're sitting with that, create that space because he's holding all of that for you. He understands to me, that's what I'm understanding, but it's really the mission is for you to allow him to be the strong individual that he is because he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. He knows, like you said, he was just the perfect dog. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he knew what he was doing. He still does. He can't, I mean, he would have loved for you that not to, of course, but they, they understand human humans foibles we'll say it that way yeah. that we don't always can't make things work the way they want but you can still send him love there's no strings no nothing just right. say you no know, i was thinking of you yesterday and i love you and that's <laughs> it don't yeah. go anywhere else with it because it's then it makes this perfect gift sure Perfect. It's so funny because I, I mean, this feeling that I've had, I, I really don't dwell on it a lot, but it comes up once in a while and yeah. I never thought of it as grief, but that's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's in your field. It's, yeah. I mean, it's so it's palpable and I feel it and it's just, it's <laughs> so heartbreaking, sure. but, I, but what I do is to offer from the perspective of the other animal to say, oh, we can work with this. We can do something about that. I do a really good job. I mean, she says me, she does a really good job of stuff. So <laughs> you may not be quite what you have in mind. Um, I don't know if she chases things or she takes off of things, but she's she's very funny about doing things. Like oh, yeah. And like yes. bursts of speed. And, and, and it's really <laughs> about like bringing it up because you deal with a lot of stuff that's not up. You deal with stuff that's whoosh, you know? Yeah. It's for both of you, you mm-hmm. deal with a lot of things that are not necessarily the up. Well, thank you so much thank for that. You. So insightful and what a wonderful conversation we've had. I feel like we could talk forever about all this mm-hmm. stuff and yeah. it's great. Um, but you have really taught us a lot in this last hour or so over an hour that we've been talking and it's just been a joy. So thank you again for joining us, Mary Helen. Now, if someone wanted to book you for a reading for an animal reading or possibly something else that you do, how would they get in touch with you? Actually, they can call me, text me. I do, you know, that's fine too. That's quick. And then I also have, they can email me. They can use my website to contact me or Facebook. So the name of my business is it's my nature. On my website, it's my nature dash mhs.com. And then my email address is Mary Hunnan instead of Mary Helen uh, at yahoo.com. And it's M A R Y H U N N E N at yahoo.com. Well, we'll make sure that uh, we put the links and the information in the description. So, listeners, um, go ahead and check out our description. And that'll also appear on our website under this episode. So thank you again so much thank for joining so much. us, Mary. I, I just can't it's wait been to meet you again in person. Yes. <laughs> I agree. I love that because I know your hearts. <laughs> See, that's the difference. Now I know your hearts and your animals showed it to me. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you. And thank also you. to our listeners, thank you so much for joining us today. I know it's been a long one, but hopefully you've enjoyed it as much as we have. So mm-hmm. thanks for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye-bye. This has been Spiritual Basics Podcast with April and Jen. Find full episodes on your favorite listening platform or visit spiritualbasicspodcast.com.